Welcome to the Writer's Den. My name is Jane Waters Thomas, and with us today is um, a young woman who is going to talk to us a little bit about her newest novel, On a LARP. Her name is Stephanie Duell. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Jane. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Stephanie, we're just going to kind of jump in. I want to know a little bit about you. I'd like for you to share with our viewers um, some of your history, what's brought you to, because you've written for magazines such as Curve, um, you have been in movies, you have produced, so you jumped right into the arts, and tell me a little bit about what drove you to the arts. True story, when I was five years old, you know, I went to the movies, and I saw, five years old, six years old, saw The Sound of Music, mm. and when it was done, I turned around, and I looked at my mother, and I said, that's what I'm going to do when I grow up. Movies. Well, yeah, that's what she Are you said. a singer? No, not at all. No, not she, was okay. like, she, was like, she was like, you're going to be a singer? This is a you know, singing nun. in the bio. You know? I didn't see it. But. <laughs> and, and I was like, no, I'm going to make movies. Outstanding. And so, you know, I grew up, went to school, went to the University of Maryland. Fear the turtle. Right on. Um, went to the University of Maryland and drove across to L.A. as soon as I graduated. Went across the country, drove to L.A., got to L.A. and, and, and just didn't know anybody. You know, just you know, knocked on a lot of doors. Got my first job, got my second job, and eventually became a producer. Well, now you've you've actually worked for like the Sci Fi Network. That had to be kind of cool. It's very cool. Very. Tell cool. me a little bit about that experience. Well, I'm very fortunate. There are two gentlemen that I met along the way named Lloyd Sagan and Sean Pillar, and they are great guys. And I originally met them doing a series called Dead Zone, mm -hmm. which we did for Sci Fi Sister Network USA, and. They went back to Sci-Fi with another series, and they called me back up, and they said, want to come and put the team back together again? And I got to do Haven, which was filmed in Nova Scotia, primarily Chester, Nova Scotia, one of the best experiences you could ask for. Oh, it would have to be. It would have to be. What, what a cool get-out-of-your-zone get kind of thing to do. But really, it's not a jump from, from movies or TV to writing. Not a big jump. And so it makes a lot of sense to me um, that you would jump right into writing. And, um, but in, in the terms of audience, um, your book, uh, The Carousel, definitely written for women, women's fiction, right? Yes. Um, and then you went to young adults. So I guess my thought is, why the change of audience and how big of a jump was that for you? I think for me, it sort of stemmed from if you're going to write a novel, you have to be able to go from page one to page however many. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to extrapolate it out. You know, some things belong as short stories. They should be three pages. You should finish. You should call it a day. For me, the carousel was the book I was always going to write. You know, oh, I was always going to write a book. And I kind of had those first 30 pages for, you know, 20 years and then mm -hmm. finally sort of sat down. There was a writer's strike in L.A. The industry shut down. And I sort of sat down and said, okay, I'm going to see whether or not, since I can't work anyway, whether or not I can actually write this draft. And so a lot of the carousel was sort of about challenging myself. And it was great. And I finished it, and the book won a number of awards, and, and it was an amazing journey. Well, from five years old on, you seem to challenge yourself, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> so, you know, sound of music to I'm doing that and I'm going to go do this thing next. And, you know, you end up on amazing TV shows, helping produce, right, and all the things that you're doing there. How exciting is it to embark on the first page of that new book for you? Or is it more of a task? Oh, no. For me, the, the hard part was deciding what I would write next. I didn't write on a LARP for a number of years because I didn't really have a book that I wanted to tell. Mm. And when I found Sidoni Rubin and, and her friends, and, and, and it's, you know, journeys are different, but writers tend to share certain similarities, which is at a certain point you can hear the characters. You know, and all of a sudden, all these people were chatting, and they all, and I was ready to write. So it becomes, okay. it's a joy to sit down and do it. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's scary, and it's all the other things, but it's sort of like, I have this story to tell now. 
Well, it's a movie playing out in your mind yeah. is what it sounds like. And how exciting is that? And I love the, the way you just described, you know, they all, they all begin to talk to you. And, and so do they have their own sound when they're talking to you? Can you hear their character oh, yes. as you're going through? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't know where it comes from. And if you look in the, the very back of the book, I have a quote from Victor Hugo. And it's all about how... You know, a novel is a group of people living in your head, basically. And and it is. I mean, there's an entire little mini camp up there jotting away about it. So you'll be doing something, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, thanks for that idea. You know, and you jot it down, and you get back to it later. But for me, at least in the process, it is, I absolutely hear people. I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> and I'm loving that because I'm, I write, and I hear the voices, and they have their own inflection. And it's the same kind of thing. You're writing, and you're like, oh, that's really good. And, you know. right. and I don't know where it's coming from, but thank you. Yeah. And please, keep talking. Yeah, keep talking. Keep moving, keep moving. <laughs> Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about the research that, that has to happen on anything that we write when we sit down. And, and Because it would be great if we could just write without the research, because you could just fill pages. But talk to me about research and what you do in the research process, specifically on, uh, on the book On a LARP. Oh, that was fun. Um, for me, one of the really critical parts of Auto LARP is that they're a group of very bright kids. And not to undersell myself in any way, but they are, let's just say, bright differently. Mm -hmm. And they're bright in technological ways mm -hmm. that I am just not bright. You know, I kind of have this vague notion of, you know, oh, well, there's an app for that, you know, <laughs> you know but I don't necessarily know how we're going to build that app. Right. And what code that is and what language that is. And it's just... And the biggest research was a certain amount of, obviously, just the reading and the pouring through and the looking and the looking, and then just having a couple of really good friends. You know, Neil Shaw, poor Neil Shaw, I think, does not answer his phone any longer. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, he's like, no, you I just can't do like that. I have a friend like that locally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, it's Jane. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, you know, you know that that call, you know, they're looking at that thing saying, hmm, do I have time for this? Uh -huh. You know, and, and you know that. And, yeah. and But really that for me, because I sort of had a sense. And then, you know, and then you wind up researching, at least for me, one of my big set pieces is the New York Public Library. And it was very important to me that whatever I wrote could technically exist in that library, that I didn't just make up floors and make up rooms. And, you know, so I was on the phone for an, several hours with somebody at the New York Public Library who, and I was just saying, so if I went from A to B, because you can tell a certain amount from the map, mm -hmm. but you can't necessarily know where the hidden staircase is. Right. So I was like, and, you know, and they were just great. They just chatted away on the phone and just sort of gave me the the they verified that what I was writing was executable within their library. And that was, you know, it's, it's people like that. So a lot of it is I imagine it and then have to find people who can tell me. So it's very exciting when, um, when you're doing research, I think, and, and you land on the solid and then you get back to the fiction, you get back to the story, you get back to the characters. Tell me a little bit about your favorite character or is there a favorite character? You know, I... There's obviously a lead character. So, you know, of and by itself, I think if you don't love Sid, you, did, you know, if I didn't love Sid, I wouldn't have the book. And Sid, ironically enough, I mean, two books and two novels later, is probably the closest to me I've ever written. You know, I, although I joke, I say she's who I aspire to be. She is not who I am. Um, but there are reasons why I love all of them. You know, they carry traits that I love, traits that I admire, or traits even that annoy me, but I understand them. Right. When writing about Sid and, and you see yourself in that character, um, how fun is it to be in the middle of your new story? You know, it, it's an odd thing, because when I'm writing Sid, I don't see me. Okay. When I write Sid, I see Sid. When my brother read Sid, he was like, oh my God, it's like arguing with you for two hours. You know? So I don't see me because I can't do these things. Uh -huh. I don't know these things. That's but funny. Sid does. So you have friends, you have family that are reading some of your material going, wow, that's you. That's you. Did you know that was you? <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> awesome. So is there a favorite... Um, author that just inspires who you are, that just kind of cranks you out, you know? I mean, you've worked on some, some material with, like, you know, the greats. 
you know, even if it was just helping produce like the Haven or, but I mean, you've worked with some of the greats materials. So who's your favorite author? Oh God, that is, you know, it's such a hard question. <laughs> yes. It's like, it's like such a hard question because, you know, there's a part of me, you know, that, you know, the book itself is inspired sort of by, you know, what I grew up with, the Happy Hollisters and Nancy Drew and mm -hmm. Scooby-Doo for that matter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there's that whole sort of let's all go solve a mystery group. And, you know, mm -hmm. they're obviously near and dear to my heart. That's why I wanted to write it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who, you know, change a world and some of them are contemporary and some of them not so much... That for me is a hard one. I could give you a list of probably, you know, 20 and, and then be happy. Is there an author that just really makes you think about your own writing style? Or do they all? There is a book that came out the other year called Ready Player One. Mm -hmm. I loved that book. Just loved that book. Loved the tonality of the book, loved everything about it. So I would say if there's something, now it's, that's a science fiction book. Mm -hmm. um, if there's something that I would like to say captures a, a rhythmic cousin to, that is what I hope I did. Very, very cool. So how spiritual is writing for you? When it's good, it's really spiritual. Right on, right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, you know, I had to ask that question because you definitely give that vibe of it's all good and I, you know. You, you know, know. On, on a bad day. Well, I walk. Like, you know, some people go to the gym, I'm, I'm a walker. Okay. You know, and when it's really bad, you just go for a walk and you say, you know, okay, I know you're out there, right. I know you're out there. So. But you guys go on vacation, you were right. talking to me like 10 exactly. minutes ago. Now is not a good time <laughs> for this. Right, we got stuff to do here, man, we have a deadline. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so, you're out walking and you're in a writer's block. What's the thing that kicks you out of it? Somebody just talks to me. And it may not be from the section of the book I'm writing. Mm. I write in order. All right. You know, not everybody does. All I right. do. So I, I, I write in order. So it may suddenly be that I'm having a conversation that's completely different. I mean, it's a conversation about the carpet on the floor rather than the plot in the book. But by the time I get back, we're all back. We're all talking to each other again, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, you know, I can jot down stuff that I'll use later. And eventually that will let me back into where I was. So you just mentioned a technical aspect of writing that, that we really don't discuss a lot, and that is the order in which you write your, your story or you write your book. And um, you nailed it. Not everybody writes um, front page to last page. Right. In fact, a lot of people like to write the end first and then start somewhere and add things and chapters, and it's just kind of, and at the end it's brilliant. Um, why do you why do you write front to back? And and then my next question would be, um, do you begin with an end in mind? Yes. Okay. I can answer. That's the quick one. Okay. Yes. In my head, I have an entire story, okay. and then I sit down. And I'm on page one, and on page three, suddenly someone shows up who I had no idea was coming, and they're going to influence how that end may alter. What I found in both books is, the end stayed in the vein of what I thought. Mm -hmm but didn't necessarily execute the way I would have, I, I would have written had I written it first. Got you. Because it, it would not have had room for people who showed up. Mm -hmm. So, but I have an idea. I mean, there's a mystery. So inherently, you kind of have to know what your mystery is and how you'll solve it so that you're working towards something. But I have to leave it, for me, wide enough open that wherever that's going to take me, I can bring it back home in the end but differently than I necessarily thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Now, when writing a mystery, um, it involves aspects of criminal justice and our legal system. And, and tell me a little bit about how you research those kinds of things. Environments, structures, those, you know, we've heard how you've done that. How do you go about researching criminal justice when you need that? Well. Fortunately for me, in both of these books, mm -hmm. they were not critical elements. They were background elements. Mm -hmm. So my research was less intense. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't need to know this tort or that, you know, right. whatever it might have been. That was, that was 
it was very background information. I mean, in this case, there is a detective and there is a police station. There, you know, there's all of those things, but they weren't being driven by any specific. Mm -hmm. The next one actually will need some, and and probably the same thing. I will I will call people and beg for mercy <laughs> and plead right. that, they, that they will be, you know, my new best friend. Right, right. <laughs> Just answer my call. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's only one quick question. Right. So who was your greatest inspiration that is not a writer in, in pushing you toward the things that you love in the arts, you know, first TV and then into writing? My greatest support is my mom. Lovely. You know, there is not a question there. I, I was always going to go to L.A. because I was always going to make a movie. And then, you know, I was graduating and I got nervous, as we all do. And she was like, oh, no, you can come home, but you need to go first. Oh, lovely. You know, and, Boy, and do I wish I heard that from all parents of all art students, you know, yeah. she's like, go do this thing. Right, she's like, there's no shame in changing your mind after you've tried it. Right, right. But you have to go, this has been your dream. So mom's go. super cool. Yeah. Very cool. How old is mom today? Um, today is, I think, the 29th, and the 31st, mom turns 85. How outstanding, wonderful. Happy birthday, mom. For thank you, one. Thank you. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> So you, you've got a series coming up. So as you just mentioned, in the upcoming series, there will be criminal justice, a little more, a little more law and order in the world for you. Um, what are some of the exciting things that you hope to see in your upcoming works? Well, for me, Sid, I, I created Sid specifically to make a statement sort of about, you know, that smart is sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, and smart is cool, and smart is hip. And so the next book, I hope, will continue that, that, you know, you're thrust into a whole new arena of here's this mystery, and, and, and you know, girls who code are fun, and girls who code can get there and get the job done and everything mm -hmm. else that goes with that. And I just literally had the pleasure of meeting with a, a school. Um, there is a STEM program at... East Lake High, mm -hmm. and they have a robotics club. Oh, fun. And they allowed me to um, take Roy Canfield, one of the coolest people I've met, uh, allowed me to come in and just ask my questions of, of the robotics club. So it was a great deal of fun, and some of that will work its way in. That is fun. That is fun. So as you, as you look to the future um, in, in your career, what do you hope that you know, at the end of the last page of the last book that you're going to write, what do you hope that your readers know about you, um, Stephanie, as the author? Hmm. That she cared. That she cared. Cared deeply about her characters. Cared deeply about what they have to say. So, Stephanie, you know, caring deeply about your characters, I think all of that stuff is, is um, definitely on the pages of your books. And I'm anxious to, to hear back from our viewers what they find when they run out and purchase on a LARP. And, and that's April 4th, so we're going to throw that in there again. April 4th, on a LARP, um, by Stephanie Duell. And Stephanie, if somebody wanted to get with you uh, to maybe ask you to speak at, at some engagement or just buy your book, how is the best way for them to do that? I have a website, stephaniedool.com, and you can reach out to me right through there. Wonderful. And the book will be available on Amazon? It is available on Amazon, and its formal release is April 4th, but it's up on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, hopefully. Wonderful, wonderful. Will you be doing book signings, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, my first one actually is in New York. Exciting. I have the book, I have a launch party in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, where I used to live, and that should be a blast. And then up to New York for a couple of signings. And it's, it's an exciting journey. to make it to the library. How exciting. How exciting. Stephanie, you have been awesome. Thank you so much. I am excited to jump in and read on a LARP, and I'm definitely going to do that. Um, please come back and share more after you get some of your new material done, and we're going to be looking for you on your website. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Jane. It's been a pleasure. This is Jane Waters Thomas. Thank you for visiting with us today at the Writer's Den. We'll see you next time.